Hello, CPS, and everyone out on Facebook Live joining us now and those that will be watching us here in the future. Uh, my name is Josh Harden, and I am the CPS Athletics Manager. I'd like to welcome you to another session of Beyond the Game. I'm joined here by Colleen Cheek, who manages our Cincinnati Public Schools Academic and Athletic Accountability Pathway Initiative that is able to happen through a strong and collaborative partnership with activities beyond the classroom. Our Beyond the Game series is an opportunity for us to dive deeper into being a student athlete and going beyond the sports and offering our students and community more support and resources. And we know the AAA pathway was started for that exact reason. I'd like to invite Colleen to take a moment and share about the progress of AAA pathway and plans for the future. Colleen? Thanks, Josh. Um, as a part of the AAA pathway, the Beyond the Game series is so important to us because as that academic and athletic accountability, we wanna make sure that you have all the resources in your pocket um, to be really successful in the future, whatever that future might be for you. So some really exciting things that we have going with the AAA pathway. Of course, our general uh, AAA pathway coaches at every school, they are pulling grades for in-season athletes. So where at the end of the school year, there might be a little bit of a drop off in grades, our AAA pathway coaches are working their hardest with our students to try to really help, um, really help encourage our student athletes to, to push for the grades in the classroom, not just the, the ability on the field. So great kudos to our AAA pathway coaches uh, and the student athletes for their ongoing work. And then some other initiatives going on with our AAA pathway program. We're really excited in May to offer three different ACT boot camps. We'll have one virtual offering. We're gonna have one at Taft, one at Walnut, and all of these offerings for ACT boot camps are free for our student athletes to participate. We just ask that they participate in all six of those sessions. So we will be emailing out information of how to sign up for those ACT boot camps at the end of this week and early next. So be on the lookout for that information for all of our student athletes and their families. We also have another Beyond the Game, May 16th with the NCAA, um, really talking again, diving deep into the recruiting process of everything you need to know, being interested in, in playing at a level beyond high school. We have a SALT conference, so student athlete leadership team. We're trying to get our SALT groups back up and running at our high schools. We're hoping to get a SALT conference together for a lot of our um, high school student athletes and junior high athletes to send some representatives to we can really craft what SALT looks like for the future. So looking to do that in the middle of May, I'm really excited about that potential for that SALT conference and to have strong student leadership involved in that process. And we also have an advisory, Athletics Advisory Council at the beginning of May. So with big issues that are happening at CPS, athlete, at CPS Athletics, we always wanna make sure that all representatives, uh, families, coaches, parents, teachers, administrators, student athletes, that their voices are represented on those big issues and that decisions just aren't made in a vacuum. So we're really excited to have our final advisory council for this school year at the beginning of May. So those are some of the big topics coming up for the AAA Pathway program specifically. Josh, would you be able to speak to a little bit more about what's going on in high school athletics? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and let me just say thank you. Uh, appreciate uh, sharing the updates on AAA Pathway. Uh, have seen the growth and progress this year and, and very excited for the future. So thanks for everything that you're doing. And yes, uh, high school athletic updates. Uh, we got a bunch. Uh, the, I guess the first would be uh, we need Mother Nature, Brother Nature, who else? Uh, you, anybody that can help us out as it pertains to our kids getting out on their fields and on their tracks. Um, uh, for this spring season you know the weather's kind of uh, thrown us for a loop here to start but we're looking forward to the spring weather turning around and getting our kids out on the field and and on the track uh, but other hot topics uh, in athletics right now uh, we as a district are truly uh, focused on supporting the whole child uh, really looking to offer continued support and resources surrounding uh, mental health and nutrition through collaborative partnerships with our great partners uh, really focusing on um, sportsmanship, uh, character be building, and um, and leadership training, right? And I know you touched on the student athlete leadership uh, teams and bringing that back. That is huge. 
so we definitely want to focus on that uh, in addition to the focus on, on academics. Earlier this school year, we had a very impactful session uh, talking about the hot topic of name, image, and likeness. Uh, we were joined uh, by a few guest speakers, and, and one was uh, Ronald Sayers representing the Ohio High School Athletic Association. And I know Ron mentioned the changes that may be coming uh, on the high school level. We know that the NCAA has already seen changes uh, and student athletes on the college level are now being able to profit off of their name, image, and likeness. And as of this month, the Ohio High School Athletic Association has added this item uh, to the referendum ballot that all high schools will be voting on. Uh, and if passed, uh, it, would, it would put our student athletes in a similar situation as the college students where they will have the opportunity uh, to profit off their name, image, and likeness. There are some uh, unique uh, items to this uh, potential bylaw that would be introduced, uh, but uh, we just want to make it clear to our student athletes, our coaches, our athletic directors, administrators, and, and parents and families that we'll be here to support the student athletes throughout this process every step of the way, regardless if this is passed or not. Um, so we will keep everybody in, in the loop uh, as the, the changes may come about, uh, but we know that this is one of those bigger topics. Um, college recruiting and scholarships, that's what we're here for today. So I just want to take a, a, a second to introduce our guest speaker. Um, our guest speaker for this session is Mr. Rick Wire, who resides in uh, Carlisle, PA. He's a nationally known motivational speaker and by all accounts considered to be an expert in the field of college athletic scholarships and the recruiting process. Uh, Rick's son, Coy, was a 2001 graduate of Stanford University where he was a first team all Pac-10 linebacker. Then on April 20, 2002, Coy achieved his ultimate goal when he was drafted in the third round of the NFL draft by the Buffalo Bills, where he played for six seasons and then went on to play for three more years with the Atlanta Falcons. While, go through, while going through the recruiting process with his son, Rick learned how difficult it was to navigate through the recruiting process since the NCAA does change eligibility requirements and recruiting rules on an annual basis. It's almost impossible to stay up to date on all these changes. And today, that ends. You know, Rick is gonna explain all the new recruiting rules and eligibility changes that have occurred recently. Who will also educate you on all the opportunities that D3 and NAI schools have to offer and how to create a blueprint for success to help your student athletes achieve academic and athletic goals for college, wherever that may be. To date, Rick has delivered his powerful message to over half a million student athletes, parents, coaches, and administrators all across the country. And his programs are used by over 6,000 high schools nationwide. Rick and I were just talking prior to this session uh, about when I was an assistant athletic director at Walnut Hills and he was able to come out and, and introduce uh, his program and talk through things with, with our families there at Walnut and he did a phenomenal job. And I'm honored to welcome him back. Um, uh, Rick Wire, we appreciate you joining us today uh, and would love for you to share the information with our family. Thank you, Josh. And good evening, everybody. Um, First question, how many of you parents out there went to college? Well, there's something I don't have in common with you. I did not. But something I have in common with every parent that's watching this workshop tonight, I love my kids as much as you love yours. That's really what brought me here today. When my son, Coy, who we were just talking about, was seven, eight, nine years old, he displayed a huge amount of athletic talent. Everything he touched, everything he did, he excelled in everything. Then in second grade, his teacher called one day and said she was having adult conversations with her second grade son. And she thought maybe he was pretty smart, so she wanted to test him. She called two weeks later. She said, I was right. Coy scored 150 on the IQ test. I said, is that good? She said, no, that's genius. I said, thank goodness for my wife. That's not that funny. Now I'm thinking, what if this continues so in middle school, middle school, and high school? I'm going to help my son. I don't know anything about college. The only thing about college sports is what I see on TV. I know absolutely nothing about recruiting. What am I going to do? What I decided to do next was go simple and genius all in the same breath. I just decided to talk to other parents where I lived back in central Pennsylvania who had kids who were being recruited, some highly recruited, some not so highly recruited. I asked them what they liked and disliked about the college recruiting process and what they might do differently if they could do it all over again, if anything. 
I took all that information, put it in a big pot, and stirred it up and created a blueprint for COI. So when the time came, I could help my son achieve his academic and athletic goals for college, whatever they might be. Today, it's your turn. Through this next work, through this workshop I'm about to do, I'm going to teach every parent out there how to create your own blueprint for your son or daughter and, and teach them all you need to know and how to create the blueprint and find their academic and athletic goals for college. But I want to warn you up front that every kid's blueprint is going to look different. No two kids have the same athletic talent, academic prowess, or goals and aspirations for anything on God's green earth, let alone going to college and playing sports. Now, I will be using and referencing this quite a bit during the workshop. It's my book. It's called The Student Athlete and College Recruiting. Everything you're going to see in my PowerPoint is in this book. And I'm going to make it available at the end of the night. Now, before we get started, though, I want to make sure you have a pad, a pen and paper, and a pencil, something to write with, and something you can write same things down. I'm going to have you write two things down before we get started, okay? First, I want, to, want you to write down a link, and we're going to show it on the screen a little later, but I want you to write this down so you have it available. It's just dsrecruits.org. That's davidsamrecruits.org. Just write that down on a piece of paper. And the next thing I want you to write down is dynamitesports.com. That's my website, dynamitesports.com. Okay? Now, just give me 20 seconds because I'm going to start up my PowerPoint, and this is kind of new for me using a system, but we're going to do it right now. All right, here we go. Colleen, are we good to go? Give it one sec. Sometimes it's a little delayed. We are good to go. Okay, thank you. All right. Now, when we started this workshop, this is what your recruiting toolbox looked like. It's pretty empty, but when we're done, it's going to be filled up. I'm going to give you all the tools that you need. We're going to cover four topics during this workshop, academics, athletics, marketing, and recruiting. And if any of you do social media like Twitter, please follow me on Twitter. It's at Rick Wire. I'm known as the Recruiting Guru. And I put a lot of things out there, uh, NCA requirements and things, and just things that come up from time to time. So you might want to follow me, okay? I'm known as the Recruiting Guru. Now, the first part we're going to talk about is academics. And I know the kids are thinking, oh, no, here we go, the academic talk. Well, let me tell you something. This first section of this workshop might be the most important academic talk you ever hear. Let me tell you something. It doesn't matter how good you are in your sport, how many touchdowns you score, how many home runs you hit, how many field goals you make, how many, how many uh, goal, soccer goals, lacrosse goals you make. It doesn't matter. If you don't have it in the classroom and you don't have what colleges are looking for, eligibility, academic eligibility wise, you might get a lot of interest, but you might be sorry about how many offers and, and opportunities you get. So please place close attention because one thing is really important. The NCAA has what's called academic eligibility requirements for freshmen. In other words, there's certain eligibility requirements that you have to meet coming into college in order to be eligible to play as a freshman your first year. Now, most college coaches don't want you to play your freshman year. They're going to redshirt you and save your four years of eligibility, but they do need you to be eligible to play just in case the upperclassmen on the roster that plays your position, the only other kid that plays your position, goes down three games into the season with a season and injury. Now, then they're going to need you to play. They're going to take off red shirt and they're going to play. So you have to be eligible academically to play or they can't play you. So we're going to talk about this shortly. Academics have a huge impact in college recruiting. And you have to work with your counselor. Listen, kids, if you haven't told your high school counselor that you want to play sports in college, tell him or her tomorrow. Because there's some triggers they can put in place and things that they can follow you and make sure track your academic eligibility to make sure you're prepared to meet all these requirements. And take the test early. I had Coy take the SAT test, which is what we mainly take here in Pennsylvania, in, this, in October of his freshman year at Cedar Cliff High School. The counselors rolled their eyes at me. They said, come on, Rick. He's not going to have all the math or English he's going to need to score eventually be his best scores, right? Well, I knew that. I just didn't want him walking into some huge auditorium his junior, senior year on a Saturday morning at 7.30 a.m., which is after Friday night, by the way, to take what could be the biggest test of his life up to that point. Maybe even have some scholarship offers hanging in the wings based on his scores on this test. I just thought that'd be a lot of pressure on my son, and kids have enough of that on the day. They don't need any more. Oh, he took the test again his junior year. He scored 350 points higher, which he should have. But you know what he said to me after he took it the second time? He said, Dad, it felt a lot different this time. I said, really? 
He said, yeah, um, comfortable, felt more comfortable. I said, no kidding. You kids can take these tests as many times as you want. And listen to this. Many colleges will allow you, if you take the SAT test, will allow you to take the highest verbal scores in one SAT, the highest math scores in another, and add the two together. You just have to ask the college. And here's something else I'm going to tell you. If you take the SAT test and you don't get the scores you wanted to get, hoped to get, or thought you needed to get, try taking the other test, the ACT. Some kids do better in one test over the other for no apparent reason, just clicks different up here. Next. Uh, I don't know if you saw this, but you might want to get your phone out and take a picture of this slide because everybody that's watching this workshop is going to get a free $300 SAT or ACT prep program from one of my partner companies called eKnowledge. This prep program has over 11 hours of video instruction, sample files, thousands of, thousands of questions, and even sample tests. Now, all you do is go to that uh, web address, eKnowledge.com slash Dynamite Sports, so take a picture of that, okay? And then this will come up. Then you gotta choose which one you want, the SAT or the ACT. Now the only thing you pay is the shipping, is, is the, I'm sorry, is the uh, registration and tech support, which is $19.99. I'll get one penny that it all goes to eNowledge. But one thing I can guarantee you, this prep program, I guarantee you will increase your or your child's test scores. And any time you can do that, count your blessing. Next, the NCA. So what are these freshman eligibility requirements? These are the requirements for Division One, Division Two freshman eligibility to be able to play in college as a freshman. Now, every high school in the country has their own NC approved core course list. On this list, you won't find gym, health, food, three, or woodworking four. But you will find English, math, natural science, physical science, social science, language, etc. cetera, core subjects only. Listen carefully. From this moment forward, when you talk about your or your student athlete's GPA, for example, no longer bring up or discuss their overall or human GPA. Because when it comes to this stuff, NCL really, that overall accumulated GPA means absolutely nothing. All that counts is their G core GPA with the core subjects from the NCA approved core course list on your high school's list. That's it. Now, you got to complete and pass 16 of these uh, courses by the time you graduate. That's not difficult to do, but this could be three years of eligible higher and higher. Listen, boys and girls, if you want to play D1 and D2 sports, and you want to be eligible to play as a freshman in college, which is going to help get more opportunities. This means you got to have three years of algebra one or higher. That means algebra two, algebra three, trig, calculus. Are you taking these courses? And you got to meet the sliding scale of eligibility, also known as the qualifier index. Now, the sliding scale was basically designed by the NCA to help kids that maybe do better in the classroom but don't test well. Here's basically how it works. The higher GPA in the classroom, the lower the test scores. The higher the test scores, the lower GPA in the classroom, sliding scale. It's a beautiful thing. And you got to register with the NC Eligibility Center. Now, you probably don't know a lot about the Eligibility Center, but show of hands, how many of you out here heard of the Clearinghouse? Okay, a lot of you, I see that. That's okay, except for one, one bad thing. The Clearinghouse was abolished eight years ago in, 2000, in 2004, right? I'm sorry, 2017. That's when the NCA formed this, the Eligibility Center. This is who tracks the academic progress of every prospective college bound athlete. I strongly urge you parents to register your athlete with the Eligibility Center no later than after the Christmas break junior year. And of course, you got to graduate from high school. Now, notice on the right hand side, the NCAA has waived this sliding scale for 2022 and 2023 grads. That's okay, but listen, you still got to take the test because you still got to get admitted into the colleges, okay? Now, these five components that you see here have not gone away for either D1 or D2 freshman eligibility. If any of you kids out there are being recruited by Division I college coaches in your sport, or you're aspiring or hoping to be a Division I athlete, guess what? There's some additional requirements for Division I only. That's right. Here it is. The core GPA went up about five years ago from 2.0 to 2.3. Also, you got to have 10 of those core courses on your transcript before you start your senior year. That's not difficult either, but seven of those have to be the heirs of English, math, or science. And once you start your senior year, those 10 courses become locked in. You can't. You can't retake them, can't change the grades. So the D you got in English times as a freshman is stuck on your transcript. Bye bye UVA, bye bye Chapel Hill, bye bye Notre Dame, and don't even think about Stanford University. You can't get into any one of those high academic schools with a D anywhere in your transcript. Now, if you meet all the requirements we just went over, there's three possible academic outcomes. One, meet them all, you can be a full qualifier. You can accept the scholarship as a freshman, practice and play as a freshman, life is good. 
If you meet most of the requirements, you fall just a little bit short on one of them, like maybe the new core GPA. Instead of a 2.3, you get a 2.2999. So close, got to count for something, right? <laughs> no. Now you're going to be in academic register. Now, the good news, not much of it, but the good news is you can still accept an athletic scholarship if, I said, if the college coach will still honor the scholarship offer, once they find out you're going to be in academic redshirt. But the bad news is twofold. First, you can only practice the first semester or quarter of your freshman year in college. But the really bad part is you will not play your freshman year. Ouch. Ouch. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, these two words right here, academic redshirt, have had one of the biggest impacts on college recruiting of anything the NCAA has done in the past 20 or 30 years. Last year, thousands and thousands of high school seniors lost their Division I scholarships because they turned out to be academic red shirts and the college coach walked away because they don't want to have to play your freshman year, but they need you to be eligible just in case they need you in an emergency situation. And if you're not all fire, well, that pretty much speaks for itself. Now, pay close attention to this, everybody, NAIA. It stands for National Association for Intermediate Athletics. They're not associated with the NCAA, competitors, if you will. I'm going to teach you more about them in a minute, but while we're talking about freshman eligibility, Let's take a look at their standards. As you're going to see, it's a lot easier than Division One, Division Two. Okay, you only have to meet two of these three entry-level requirements, and I'll just let you read those. And don't forget, this is all in the book. Okay, so you don't have to get writer's cramp taking notes. Everything's in the book. All right. Next, I've already told you this, and I've already told you this, but I haven't told you there's 249 of these schools around the country. Two-thirds of them are religiously affiliated. That may or may not be important to you, but it's a fact you should be aware of in case it is. And they're much like in size and similar attention division three schools, which means smaller schools or class size, which usually equates to a better education. But guess what? Any high schools have that division three schools don't? Athletic scholarships. That's right. They have athletic scholarships. Now, they have fewer recruiting rules than NCAA does. Coaches can pretty much contact athletes anytime during high school. Recruiting tends to start a little later than D1, D2 because NAI coaches want to see which athletes just missed the cut at the bigger schools. And they'll spend more time making sure that their athlete, their school's the right fit for the athlete, academically, socially, and athletically. Now, to play on a sports, you should follow these steps. First, register with the NA Eligibility Center. Two, if you either test the SAT or ACT, insert the code 9876 where it asks where you want your score sent. And submit all this information, and then have your high school counselor send your official transcript to the NAI Eligibility Center. Now, NAI has 13 scholarship sports. If you see your sport on this next slide, count your blessings. That's called opportunity with a capital O. And they're actually adding another one. I think it's this coming year, 2023. They're adding, listen to this, women's flag football. That's right, everybody, women's flag football. For dads, if you got a daughter and she's playing sports and she's not getting recruited or getting offers in the sports she's playing, you might want to get the old pig skin out of the garage, start teaching her how to catch and throw, because you never know. Uh, they have 23 national championships, 16,000 student athletes compete in schools. In fact, one out of every seven college athletes is NAIA. And how much money do they have? $500 million in aid. Show of hands out there. How many of you would like a piece of that pie? You should all be raising your hands. Next, Division Three. Did you know there's 442 Division Three colleges around the country? Guess how many we have in my home state of Pennsylvania? 59. That's 15% of blessing for sure. These are also smaller schools and class sizes like NEIA, better education, but they do not have the athletic scholarships. But don't let that fool you for one second, everybody, because I'm here to tell you they got tons and tons and tons of money, three different types, academic money, financial aid, and grants. And a grant, if you don't already know, is simply a gift with a capital G that your kid does not have to pay back. So you call it whatever you want. I call it free money. <laughs> are we having fun yet? All right. It's the perfect fit for many of your kids. So Division Three, what are the recruiting rules? Well, athletes can receive recruiting materials at any time. Phone calls, there's really no limit. But off-campus contact, meaning at your high school, can only happen after the athlete's sophomore year. And official visits can only happen after January 1st of your year. I can't see that bottom slide. I don't know if I can do that or not. Uh, yeah, I can. After your junior year. All right. All right, here we go. Uh-oh, I can't see the... There we go. All right. Did you know 80% of all athletic opportunities in college come from Division III, NAI, and junior college? How many of you kids out there tonight could go to one of those schools? 
get a really good education, have a really nice job, have a big experience, and then listen to this, leave college with little or no debt. Wouldn't that be awesome? Now, athletics. Understand recruiting standards. How do college coaches decide which kids to send letters to off on visits on eventually money? How do they decide? Well, they have standards for recruiting for every sport and position. When my son, Coy, was in ninth grade, the varsity football coach brought him right up to the varsity football team. He was a pretty good uh, athlete growing up. As a nine-year-old, he was an Eastern National AU wrestling champion out of 12 states. And Pee Wee football, every Sunday he'd run for, he was a running back. He'd run for three or four touchdowns every Sunday. Nobody could catch him. If they did, they couldn't bring him down. So, we, so the, the varsity football coach, two weeks before the opening game, his freshman year, named him the starting tailback. And I thought, wow, they had a junior and senior that was on the team, were pretty good the year before. Well, three weeks into the season, Coy was leading the entire mid state in rushing and scoring. After the game, now we had Coy wire jerseys made, so everybody knew who we were. After the games, people, parents, and like would come down and seek out my wife and I and grab us and my son's really sad. And they'd say, so how does it feel to have a Division One athlete in your family? I'm like, I don't know. How's it feel to have a Division One running back in your family? I don't know. What does it even look like? I didn't go to college. Is he D1? Is he D3? I have no clue. But now I'm thinking, hey, I better find out. So guess what I did? I picked the phone literally and called six Division One college football coaches at six different colleges. I talked to the running backs at each school. I told them about Corey's early success and everybody was claiming he was a D1 athlete. I told him I didn't go to college. I didn't know any of this stuff. I said, I'd say, coach, could you help me out? Tell me what you, and listen, even though my story is about football, you can equate it to any sport. Coach, what do you look for when you recruit a running back out of high school? Give me some intangibles like a height and weight. Speed's kind of important for running backs. So how about 40 times? For, for strength, let's go with the two coreless bench and squat. These Six coaches gave me five of very close to the same answers, which they should if they're all Division One coaches, recruit the same caliber of athletes, right? And Coy was already meeting four of the five. I'm like, oh, my gosh, he is D1. Now I knew. If I'd have found that he was D2 or D3, I was all right with that. I just want to know what kind of colleges should we start looking at and what kind of colleges should we never be looking at. Then when I started doing live seminars around the country, I'm thinking, wait a minute. What field hockey parents and female soccer parents, female basketball parents, female track athletes and swimmers and and, and lacrosse players, wouldn't they want to know about their daughters, what I want to know about Coy and football? And the answer was, of course they did. So guess what I did? I picked the phone, called more college coaches for you, not for me. I had already been through this. And I asked them for the recruiting standards for every sport by position. And you'll never guess where I put those standards. That's right, in my book. I'm talking about every sport now. Let me see if I can do this backwards here. I'm talking about every sport from, let's see, from from volleyball to cross country, to tennis, track and field, uh, softball, swimming, crew, soccer, ice hockey, lacrosse, huge growing sport in the East, gymnastics, golf, uh, field hockey, men's and women's ba base basketball, baseball, and of course, football. Now for football, I called the University of Florida, Florida State coaches. And I told them about my quarters of lake success, and I asked them if they could put together a chart for me by position with those same five uh, in recruiting intangibles, preferred height, weight, 40 time bench and squat. Now, listen to what they said they look for when they recruit a lineman out of high school. This is Florida, Florida State. Listen to this. Preferred height, six foot four. Preferred weight, 280 pounds. Ooh. Run a 5 one forty or better. That's smoking. Bench 320, squat 450. Are you kidding me? There's a name for this kid. You know what it is? Freak. This kid's a freak. That's right. Now, are they walking the halls of every high school in the country? Absolutely not. Do they exist? Yes, they do. College coaches got to find them though, right? But what if a young man goes to a CPS, one of the public schools of CPS, and he's a lineman on the football team. He wants to play in college, but he's he's not 6'4", he's 6'1". He doesn't weigh 280 pounds either. He's 250 soaking wet. Doesn't run a 5'1", 40 either, maybe 5'5", five, five with the wind at his back. Doesn't bench 320 either, maybe high 260s. Doesn't squat 450 either, maybe 325. Does that mean this kid can't be a lineman in college? Absolutely not. But what does it mean? It won't be a Division I school. It also won't be a Division II school because in football, size matters. The standards that I just read to you are Division III. Still pretty big, fast, and strong parents. This is where it starts for you. Time, speed, distance. Height, weight, 40 time. How fast my daughter can swim the 50-meter breaststroke. How far my son can throw the javelin. How fast my daughter can throw the softball on her hand, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Parents, if you don't know what the college standards are for your kid's sport position, how are you going to know where to start looking in college? Now, in my book, I put 
I put a, uh, this came from the NCA. These are the scholarship limits of high school senior girls that go on to participate, participate in college. And notice the second, third column say scholarship. She really says scholarship limits. You see, the NCA has scholarship limits for every sport, male, female, both Division One, Division Two. Look on the right hand side under basketball, Division Two. Check that out. The most number of scholarships a Division Two women's basketball program can have on the roster at any given time is ten. That's the good news. The bad news is you have to divide every one of these numbers by five. Why? Freshman, sophomore, junior, senior, fifth year, senior. That's why five years of recruiting classes. You do the math. Ten scholarship limit for Division Two women's basketball divided by five recruiting classes is only what? Two scholarships per year per college. You're kidding, right? No, I'm not kidding. Now, how good do you think a young lady needs to be to be recruited, considered an offer just a Division II basketball scholarship? Well, as they say in Dutch country, Lancaster, Pennsylvania, not too far down the road from where I live, pretty darn good. If she's not one of the top 30 or 40 in the state in her position, she don't stand a snowball's chance in Hades, and that's just Division II. Guys, not a whole lot better for you either. Are we, and these are in my book, by the way, don't worry. Are we painting a picture here? You bet we are. These are not required charts. These come from the NCAA. I'm simply the messenger. But they say that knowledge is power, right? These programs, th these charts are pretty darn powerful. Now, marketing. This is one of the hardest things for parents to do. Now, parents, listen to me. You got to be honest and realistic about your kid's talent and ability. Because if you're not, not only could you ruin any chance your son or daughter has of finding the right school, the right fit, or any money, it could literally turn out to be the biggest mistake you make for your student athlete. Some parents think their kids are this when perhaps they're this. And there's nothing wrong with this. So if you're thinking, well, okay, how do I figure out where my son or daughter could play in college? Here you go. Talk to your high school club or travel coach. Ask him or her to let tell you what they think where your son or daughter can play in college. Now, you might not like the answer you get, but they ought to know something, right? You know something I did? I actually talked to opposing coaches on the football field. That's right. I would contact opposing coaches and get their take on what they saw from my son out in the football field to see what they thought. That's right. You could do the same thing for your kid's sport. And highlight skills division like a resume, but don't make don't make them an hour long. Your highlight skills DVD should be no more than five minutes long, and it should include some game film, okay? And don't wait till your junior senior year to make it. Start making your highlight skills DVD or, or huddle pro, uh, highlight film in ninth grade and add to it each year so you have it ready when college coaches look for it. Now, when it comes to marketing kids to college coaches, we parents basically have three options. Option one's pretty simple. Cross your hands, kneel up back by the bed and pray that some college coach is gonna find your son or daughter need their position that year and have some money to opt them to come and play. You might think that's the option I chose. I already told you how good of a football player and wrestler he was and he had a genius IQ thanks to mom, right? About what if I don't do anything? You know, if it's meant to be, it'll be. Just based on his academics and athletic talent, what if he got two offers to senior year? I'm like, oh, that'd be awesome. And it would be, but then I got thinking, what if neither one of those two schools had the major of the courses he wanted to take in college? What if both schools were close to home and he wanted to go far away? What if both schools were cold climate, he wanted a warm climate? You see where I'm going, right? Don't get me wrong. Two hours from any colleges would be awesome. But in this instance, my son would consider going to either one. So I had to come up with another option. I simply called it option number two, market the student athlete myself. Now in my book, I call it the four-step marketing plan. I thought, what if I put together a marketing pack about COI and send it out to college coaches? What if it included an academic and athletic resume, a highlight DVD, a cover letter, an information sheet, and copies of newspaper articles? And what if these packets cost me $20 each to figure all that plus the $5 per hour mail shipping? What if I sent out 70 of these packets? When would I want to start sending them out? His senior year? No. Junior year? Mm-mm. I already told you how freshman year you had in college, right? I'm thinking, why not sophomore year? I thought, what if I make this a two-year program? What if I send out 35 packets of sophomore year and another 35 is junior year? And in doing that, instead of using option one and not doing anything, getting two offers as a senior, what if I did all this? And what if Coy got six offers by, let's say, I don't know, April 1st of his junior year? Well, that's exactly what happened. By April 1st of Coy's junior year at Cedar Cliff High School, he had six Division One offers, right? That's right. Now, the key to having success, what I did, is numbers. You can't send out five or ten packets and expect that five or ten scholarship offers. It just doesn't work that way. But the nice thing about option two is you can set a budget. We've got $400 in the coffee can up behind the white kitchen cupboard. When it's gone, we're done. Well, there you go. But there's one more thing you're going to have to do if you use option two, and that's this. 
follow up with the college coach. Every time I sent one of these 70 packets out, three days later, like clockwork, I called the coach I sent the packet to first, wanted to make sure he received the packet. Second, see if he had any questions about Koi could answer. Third, I always had a list of questions that I would ask and have them in my book. And then I did this. I'd say, coach, when I told Koi who I was calling today, he started to ask me some questions about your school, your university, and your football program. And, and I have the answers to all, but he's right here in the living room. Hey, Koi, could you hear me, son? Coach, would it be okay if I put Koi in the phone, let him ask you a few questions? And the college football coach would say, well, sure, I'd love to speak with Koi. Well, of course they would. What was about to be conducted right then and there over the phone? What might you call that? An interview. That's right, an interview. Now, they've already seen Koi's transcript, phenomenal student. They've seen his highlight video, freak athlete. Now to get to interview him over the phone, if Koi wasn't already on this college coach's recruiting list, he will be now. But if he was on this guy's list to begin with, he's probably going to move up a few notches. Would you agree? That's right. This, ladies and gentlemen, is option number two. Now, use option two, you have to start early, like eighth, ninth, tenth grade. If you're a junior or senior, it's too late. It takes too much time to get this started. But maybe you and your wife both work. Maybe you own a business and that's all you do is work. Or maybe you're a single mom or a single dad. You had a kid in high school and elementary school. Between cooking and laundry and homework and running the kids here and there and just being a good parent, you don't have much of time for anything else, let them breathe. Then this option two will not be an option for you because it takes a whole lot of time, right? Now, there's only one other option. But first, I got to tell you, though, recruiting is gone completely digital. You have to have a digital online recruiting profile. Let me explain something to you. Over the past two years, when the pandemic was in full swing, the NCAA declared what we call a dead period. College coaches were not allowed to contact you. You could contact them, but they could use digital profiles. And that's how they recruited kids. You know what they found out? Hey, we don't have to get on planes and use recruiting budget to go see kids. We can see them online. We can see like in Huddle, a highlight video. We can see their transcripts. We can learn about the kid in a profile, a digital online recruiting profile, absolutely necessary. And then now that the pandemic's kind of winding down, they're thinking, hey, this was really efficient for us. So they're still doing this. So you want to have a digital online recruiting profile. And here's something, kids. Don't limit your search for college. I'm here to tell you, the smaller the circle you draw around your, your, your home in, in the Cincinnati area, the fewer opportunities you're going to have. The bigger, the more opportunities. And it's kind of like casting a wide net like you're tuna fishing. Let me ask you something. If you were a commercial tuna fisherman or fisherwoman, and you went out one day on the bay, it was a beautiful day, and you had a 30-foot diameter net. There's a certain number of tuna fish you're going to catch with a 30-foot diameter net, right? Okay. So the next day you go out and you borrow one of your friend's nets, but it's 300 feet in diameter. Would you agree that you'll probably catch a lot more tuna with a 300-foot diameter net than you would a 30-foot net? Of course you would. It's the same thing with the college search. Don't limit your search for college. Expand from home, uh, and the bigger, the bigger your circle, the more opportunities you have. There it is. Africa, for Google, Google pictures, right? All right. Option three, getting help from professional. We're talking about recruiting services versus college scouting services. Now, I'm not a big fan of the first recruiting services. They've been around for 15, 20 years. There's tens of thousands of them out there. What I don't like about most of them, most of them are franchise-owned companies. All that means to me is if somebody, anybody has enough money to buy a franchise, they can literally own a recruiting service. Doesn't mean they know what they're doing or be able to help my son or daughter, but they can own a recruiting service. I just think that's a flaw in their business model. But about nine, 10 years ago, some people in the industry broke away and formed what we now call today the latter college sky services. Now, there's only three or four of these companies around the United States, but they're becoming very popular with you families. Biggest difference between these two? College scouting services have recruiting specialists for every sport, male and female. These specialists are either former college coaches in that sport or scholarship athletes in that sport. So they know the game, they know recruiting, and know how to evaluate talent. Here's the bad news. Not all you kids or all your kids' parents that are watching this tonight would even qualify for a college scouting service to work with or for them. Let me explain why. These companies have standards. First, they have academic standards, and I don't mean minimum 2.3 GBAs, athletic and talent standards, and of course, character standards. Now, wait a minute. Aren't those the four things that college coaches are looking for? It is. So if your son or daughter is already a junior or senior, or you don't have time to use option two and do all the stuff that I did, Here's a company that I recommend if you want to use option three. They're based out of Chicago, Illinois. They are a college sky service. And I can tell you they care about kids and education as much as I do. They're called Next College Student Athlete, NCSA. Anybody ever heard of them? Whoa. Anybody using them? 
Okay, well, great. Well, let me tell you a little something about NCSA. What's the biggest benefit of using them? Well, if the best way to describe what they do is this. Imagine if Rick Wire was your next door neighbor, right? And anytime your son or daughter got a letter, you could walk across the lawn and knock on my door and say, hey, Rick, my kid got a letter. You take a look at it. Sure, I would. And then maybe you want to take your kid on some visit, recruiting visits. Could you imagine if you could pick my brain and I could help guide you through this? That's what NCSA's recruiting coaches do to help you out. They help track and monitor you all through this thing. Now, here's some information about NCSA. They recruit for 32 NCAA varsity sports, and they're the only NCAA-approved recruit, college recruiting service in the country. 40,000 college coaches used their network in 2019. That same year, 6.3 million profiles reviewed and 5.2 million athletes were followed. And 25,000 enrolled NCSA athletes received college commitments in 2019. That's incredible. Are they successful in what they do? I think we just figured that out. 95% of the seniors that qualify to work with them and then enroll in their programs get an average of $16,700 a year for four years. This, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, is option number three. Now, NCSC is going to offer every family attending this workshop tonight, their student athlete is going to get a free digital online recruiting profile. That's right, the thing we are just talking about, a free digital online recruiting profile linked to the Recruit Match database that's used by over 40,000 college coaches at every level. And they're going to give the moms and dads and guardians a free college scout recruiting assessment of their student athlete. And here's what you're going to get. This free digital profile includes photo, personal information of the student athlete, address, cell phone, email, mom and dad's information, your coaches, your counselor's information, your stats and athletic achievements. You can upload your transcript for college coaches to view. And look at this. You can upload up to six highlight videos. Now, even if you want to try this yourself like I did first, you got a free profile. You can send this stuff out to college coaches. And then they'll give moms and dads that free college scout recruiting assessment from one of these certified former college coach or scholarship athlete. Now, remember what I said earlier. Okay, here's this link. I told you to write this down, but here it is. Okay. To get your free digital online recruiting profile, and we're going to put this link up in the chat box. So, Josh, you can do that now, but it's it's right here also. Josh is going to put it in the chat box, dsrecruits.org. So all you do is open up a browser on your phone and type in dsrecruits.org, and then just fill out the form, okay? It'll say location, drop-down menu, it'll say P CPS Athletics, and then at the bottom, just answer all the questions. At the end, it'll say don't forget to check yes at the bottom of the form where it asks if you want to receive the free profile. Then NCSA will email your student athlete the link to start creating the profile. Okay? So there you go. Take a picture of that slide if you want. If you need help, you can text me at my cell phone number. There you go. Now, recruiting. This is what you're all waiting for. Pay close attention. Oh, by the way, don't fill that form out now. Just open, if you want, you can open it up on your phone and you can fill it out when we get to the end and I'll tell you how, how to go through this again, okay? But anyway, pay pay attention to this. There's two types of recruiting visits, official and unofficial. Most coaches will tell you that the official visits are the most important because those are the ones that college coaches pay for. But I'm going to tell you just the opposite. I believe the unofficial visits are the most important. In fact, I call this the money page. This is where the wire fan made all the money. The problem with an unofficial visit they're not even allowed to give you a soda pop, but they can give you three free tickets to home sport events. The Wire family, we saw 15 big-time college football games. That's right, 15. All I did was pick the phone, called 15 college coaches, and asked them for tickets. Hey, for all they knew, I had the next Walter Payton sitting in my living room. What was it going to cost them to find out? Just three tickets. Now, you might be thinking, why did Rick take Coy on all 15 visits? I'll tell you why. I wanted my son to see as many types, and listen to this, as many types of colleges, campuses, facilities, coaching staffs, types of kids that were being recruited as possible. So that when he found the right fit, Stanford University, his heart would tell him, and this will never lie. But on these visits, we'd go to a game, they would put, put us on the sideline for pregame warm-up. Coy got to be 15 feet from a Division One running back. He got to see how ripped, athletic, fast, strong, and quick these kids were. You know why that was so important for me as dad? I needed Coy to see what that looked like up close and personal. That way, if on the way home, Coy would have turned to me and said, hey, Dad, I can't be that. I said, son, it's okay. We're just looking at the wrong schools. Makes sense, right? Okay. These visits can be taken at any time. I recommend starting as early as fourth grade. That's just a joke. But listen, don't worry about taking these visits or setting them up. It's all in my book. Now, how to set them up, who to call, what to say, and all that. And listen, I recommend taking uh, – uh, two unofficial visits your freshman year. The first one's got to be a D1. 
Declan D3. One of the things you're going to do is go see a practice. When you're shaking the hands of these kids coming off the field of court, if you get a neck cramp, that's a sign from above, literally from above. It, it, that means your son or daughter is never going to play Division One athletics unless they grow 18 inches over the next couple of years. But then you go visit a D3 school, and the kids look a little more your kid's size. Your kid feels a little more comfortable. There you go. But you'll never find this out unless you take these unofficial visits. And it's really important how to, 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 to do this. It's one of the most important things you can do as a family. And you take as many unofficial visits as possible. Now, one of the visits we took, one of the six schools that offered Coyote was Pitt. Now, we set up the visit. We toured the facilities. We saw a dorm. And then we got back to the football hub. And it, listen, no matter what sport your kid plays, listen to what I did. You can do the same thing when you're on your visits with your kid for their sport. I always look for a player to talk to. I saw a kid come out of the meeting room in the far corner of the building. He had flip-flops, gym shorts, T-shirt, and a folder's hand. I turned to the coach and said, hey, coach, can we talk to that young man for a few minutes? He said, sure. Hey, Darnell, come here a minute. The kid started walking towards us. He got closer and 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 closer. Hi, Darnell. Darnell was a six foot six, 225-pound All-American quarterback, a little double-A school in Kentucky. He was handsome as get up. His smile lit up the room. And after the coach did the introductions with Jane and Quinn, I turned to him once again and said, as I always did, coach, can we talk to Darnell for a few minutes? He said, sure. Let's all just go over here and sit down. I said, no, no, coach. I think he misunderstood me. I meant could Jane and Quinn and I speak with Darnell in private? Oh, the coach would do a little two-step shuffle back. Uh, uh, sure. I mean, what was he going to say? No. Now, why would I want to do this? Think about it. We're going to ask Darnell a lot of questions about the school, the university, football program, academic support, or lack thereof. And I'm not going to get the same answers if his coach is standing right next to him, right? So we took Darnell by the arm and in the nearest conference room, I closed the door. I said, Darnell, what was it like from a, coming from a little double-A school in Kentucky to here at the University of Pittsburgh? He said, oh, Mr. Wire, to say it was challenging would be a huge understatement. He said, he said I'm, I'm, I'm just a redshirt junior this year going on my third year of athletic eligibility. I haven't been on the field for one player, one down. He said, in the two years that I've used up of the four that I get, I haven't stepped on the field. I haven't done anything. In fact, just a couple of weeks ago, I went to the coaching staff and asked them, could I play another position? He said, look at me, Mr. Wire. I'm six foot six, 225 pounds. I can run like a deer. I can catch the football. I could play some wide receiver. You know, like that Julio Jones guy did in Atlanta all these years, right? Rise up. And then, or I could put on 10, 15, 20 pounds, bulk up, do a little blocking and a little catching. I could play some tight end. You know, like that Gronk I did all those years up in New England, right? Arr, arr, arr. You see, Mr. Wire, if it wasn't for the love and support that I got from my parents at home and my recruiting coach at Pitt was like a second father to me, I'd have walked away from everything. All this came from a six foot six, 225 all American quarterback from a little double A school in Kentucky. And that, my friends, was a true story. And something else you kids might want to keep in mind. Whatever position you play in your sport, when you get to college, you might be asked to play a different position. You need to think real hard about whether you want or not to do this, because if you agree to do it, you're probably going to get on the field or court a lot earlier, and that could, and then maybe switch to your position back. You have to talk to your coaches about that, but don't be afraid to switch positions if a college coach needs you to do that. And listen, one of the things... Some, when I do these live events, there's always a kid comes up to me and says, Mr. Wire, what do I need to do to play college sports? I said, look, basically, academics, work hard. But if you want to be if you want to be a college athlete in any sport at any level, you better outwork everyone every single day. Let me say that again. Outwork everyone every single day. It was my son's mantra through high school, college, and the NFL. I even had wristbands made of it. Look at that. Outwork everyone every single day. It's what it takes to play college sports at any level and be the best. Now, official visits. These used to happen your senior year, but not anymore. The college coach, colleges can pay for all or part of the visit. Now, you can only take five official visits, but only one official visit per school. And they can't exceed more than 48 hours. Don't worry, the college coach will take care of that. And you'll need test scores, transcripts, and a few other things. Now, college can pay for the following for you and your parents. And don't forget, all this is in my book, okay? So just pay attention here. Transportation to and from campus, lodging throughout your visit, three meals a day, and three tickets for a home sporting event, okay? Now, in most sports, you can start taking official visits August 1st, junior year now. Men's basketball is different. Some of these sports are different. I'll just let you see these. And these are all in my book, by the way, right? Okay, there you go. 
that college can only provide transportation for parents and guardians if they travel in the same car as they recruit. Flights and separate bus or train tickets cannot be purchased. Okay, and here's some recruiting updates. College athletic department staffs and coaches are not allowed to help you with an unofficial visit now or official visit until August 1st before your junior year. That doesn't mean you still don't take the unofficial visits, just means you're gonna have to do most of that on your own, okay? Colleges cannot make any verbal offers before June 15th of recruit sophomore year. And a college coach cannot have any communication with the recruit or their parents before June 15th sophomore year. This includes text, emails, and phone calls. Vision one recruiting updates, there they are. There's a ton of them. You can go on the MC. This could be a three hour long session. You still want to learn all of them, but I'm teaching you what you need to know. Now, once, once you stu your student athlete decides where they want to go, Here's what's going to happen. When they call the coach, the coach is going to say, okay, now it's time. Put all this in writing. The money I promised to give you for four or five years, you committing to coming and play for me, we're now going to put this in a legal binding contract. You're going to sign a student athlete, and so am I, the college coach. This contract is called the National Letter of Intent. Listen very carefully, parents. Don't ever, ever, ever let your son or daughter sign this legal binding contract unless you know in your heart it's where your kid wants to go, not where you want them to go, where they want to go and make sure they're choosing this school for the right reasons because once they once they choose this school and they they sign a letter of intent if they change their mind for any reason whatsoever only bad things can happen here's one really big one now there's a one year one season penalty guess what now instead of having four years to play in college they're down to three they just lost a year of eligibility it's gone forever they can never get it back it's done now you can only sign one letter of intent but you can sign an NEIA letter of intent and an NC letter of intent because remember, they're not associated with each other. Now, now athletic scholarships used to be awarded on a year to year basis, but not anymore. Now they're four year athletic scholarships. Uh, your scholarship can be reduced or canceled, but it's only if it's discipline or poor academic results. Okay. Now, in my book on page, I think it's 94, I have what's called the 10 most important recruiting questions. Now, I'm going to read all 10 of them to you. You need the book for that, but I will tell you what the last one is. When your son or daughter comes, you say, "Hey, mom and dad, I know where we're going to go. This is where this is the college I'm going to be. I'm going to call the coach and tell him, no, 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 no. Before you let him call the college coach, sit him down beside the dining room table or the kitchen table. Take everything electronic out of their near, their nose, their mouth, off their head, everything. And here's what you ask: them. If you were to go to this college, and the very first day of practice your freshman year, in fact, the very first drill you do." God forbid something crazy freaky happens and you shatter your right knee in four places. I could never play sports again. It happens every day. Ask them this, would they still want to go to this college for four years to get their education? If they can answer yes to that question, mom and dad, they found the right school. If not, you should probably keep looking. Now, what about redshirt? Redshirt means this, you get five years of college to play four years of athletic eligibility. I recommend every kid go to a school where the coach tells you they're going to redshirt you and save your four years. That way, your first year, your redshirt year, you can practice and all that, but you don't play. You can get used to the speed of the game, the size of the players, being 100,000, in my son's case, 3,200 miles from home, okay? And you can practice and travel and do everything. But listen, here's something else. Boy redshirted his freshman year. By the end of his fourth year of school, his senior year of school, he was a redshirt junior. He had one year of eligibility left. There was one final exam he couldn't take because if he took any passed, he would have to graduate from Stanford and missed out on running the football his fourth year. And then I found out Stanford had a program where my son, listen to this, get his master's degree in that one fifth final year. I'm like, what? I thought a master's degree was a two year program. Well, apparently not anymore. Coy could leave Stanford in five years with a master's degree in his back pocket. You know how much money that's worth in the corporate world, kids? Lots of money. Then I found out lots of other colleges had the same program, but they college coaches don't tell us that, but I'm telling you. And here's what you do. When some coach says, hey, I want your son or daughter to commit to us their junior year, we want to know that they're committed to us and we don't have to worry about that position. You say to them, well, must, you are one of the top schools on the list. Don't ever tell a college coach they're the number one school on the list. Just say you're one of the top schools in, on their list. But let me ask you a question, college coach. If my son or daughter does my class and commits early, when they get to your college, if they get all their coursework done in four years, would you get them into that accelerated master's program you have? If they really want your son or daughter to come to their team, they're going to extend their hand and say, I can make that happen. The next thing you better do, get it in writing. 
Because if it's an assistant coach, they might not be at that school five years after your kid's there. But you get in writing and your kid gets all their coursework done in four years, even if that coach leaves, guess what? They're getting in an accelerated master's program. Look what you learned tonight, right? Now, again, social media. I have a whole section on social media in my book, and I want to thank NCSA for that because I know nothing about social media, but they did this whole segment on social media. Here it is. Points of interest. Division one, Division two coaches can direct message that's called DM or recruit either beginning June 15th or September 1st of your junior year. They can like, share, retweet, or favorite a recruit's post, but they cannot publicly communicate with a recruit until the athlete commits to their program. This is referred to as the click, don't type rule. Now, DM coaches to get quicker responses. This is another tool in your tool belt, but keep your direct messages short and to the point. Don't write a novel. Update your Twitter account and review all your social media accounts on a regular basis. Post all this information, and here's a big one. Don't allow others to post inappropriate content on your social media platforms. Let me tell you something, kids. Every college program in the country has at least one or two or an entire office of people, depending on the size of the program, and all they're doing is following their recruits' social media. Why? Because now they can make sure not only that your grades are right and, you, and your stats are good, but now they can check out your character. So even if you have friends that are posting bad pictures or saying bad stuff on some of your social media, they look at that and they say, oh, what kind of kids is this recruit hanging out with? Maybe they're not the kid we thought. So I have what's called the grandmother rule. Listen to this, you'll like this. Before you kids post, tweet, Snapchat, Instagram, anything, ask yourself this. If I was to show this to grandma, what would her reaction be? If you think you'd show it to her and she'd go, oh, that's so cute, go ahead, it's okay. But if you think you'd show it to grandma and she'd go, oh, no, not that, probably not a good idea. If grandma wouldn't like it, don't post it. Social media can be an effective recruiting tool. Set all your accounts to the public. Send your social media handles to all coaches that are recruiting you. Follow like their programs. And don't just follow the head coach, but the strength coaches, trainers, and current athletes to keep an eye on what's happening. And tweet any offers you receive. Because once a college offers you and other colleges find out, it'll open up the floodgates. Create your blueprint for success. Have an academic plan. Kids, if you're not already taking one or two weighted courses a year, I highly recommend you do that. Why? Because you might be good enough athletically to play at UVA, Chapel Hill, Notre Dame, or Stanford. But if you're not taking one or two weighted courses, if you don't have five or six weighted courses on your transcript, it'll be difficult to get into those schools. Do you want to expand your opportunities? Take one or two weighted courses a year. Athletic preparation speaks for itself. Market yourself to college coaches or get help. And create a blueprint for success and leave no stones unturned because you get one shot to go through this make it count. Now, this is my book. I've been showing on now, of course, it's bound. We were doing a little coil bound for a while, but now they're they're regular bound now. The books are twenty dollars. I don't know if this book will help you or not. Honestly, I have no clue whatsoever, but it's what I use to help my son. And it's not a football book, it's every sport book. It has all those those recruiting standards in there that we talked about earlier for all the male and female sports. It has my 10 most important recruiting questions. How to set those on visits? Sue Ramsey, the 2013 NC Division II Women's Basketball Coach of the Year, coached Ashland University on national championship. She has 60 questions in here of what to ask your son or daughter when choosing a college. They're invaluable. And in the back of the book is a list of colleges and universities by state and by division. Now, if you buy my book, I'll also include one of my wristbands. Outwork everyone every single day. These are usually $2. But if you buy one of my books from this workshop, I'll include that. Now, at the end of my workshop, there's going to be a link in the chat box. Josh is going to put it in there. And basically, that second thing I had you write down at the beginning, dynamitesports.com, that takes you to my website. In the upper right-hand corner is the online store. Or you can simply click on the link in the chat box. It will take you right to the store, to the handbook. Just add the handbook to your chart, to your cart, and then check out. And again, I'll give you a, I'll give you a wristband for everybody that does that. Now, now please take your cell phones out now and take a picture of this next slide. I do virtual recruiting workshops one, every month. My next one is on Tuesday, April 26th at 8 p.m. Please take a picture of this and send it out to your other families uh, that you know on your teams. Give them to your coaches. Post it on your Twitter, Instagram. Tell everybody about it. If you learned a lot tonight, why not have all your friends learn just as much? 
all you do is go to my website, dynamitesports.com. That was the second thing I had to write down. And the law and the registration is right there in a big gold button right on the main page. Okay. Now, something else I'm going to have you do, uh, that dsrecruits.org. Okay. Now I want you to click on that link. I want you to open that link up, dsrecruits.org. And I want you to start filling that form out. Okay. When you get down to the part that says, please rate the speaker, please give me a 10 because my wife sees these. I want her to know I brought my A game tonight. All right. And then don't forget the last questions asked you about the free profile and evaluation. Don't forget to check yes. Okay. That's dsrecruits.org. Josh put it on the chat box and you wrote it down at the beginning of the thing. dsrecruits.org. Fill that out. And then don't forget to purchase my book and I'll send you one of those wristbands. Listen, I want to thank all of you who attended this workshop tonight. A special thanks to Colin, Colleen Cheek and Josh Harden and all the CPS athletic staff for making this event possible. I really enjoyed it. I love helping kids and parents. And if you have half the success that I did and enjoy half of what I did, it'll be a blessing. So stay safe. Good luck during your recruiting journey. God bless to all. Well, thank you so much, Rick, for that robust presentation. Um, I know every time that I listen to a presentation, whether it's you or Darnell, I, I definitely learn something new each time. Um, and, and I have one of the copies of that book, and it has been very, very helpful just in talking with student athletes. So thank you for sharing um, that with us. And on behalf of CPS Athletics, Josh Harden, um, on behalf of ABC Activities Beyond the Classroom, and, and myself, I just want to say thank you again for taking time to speak with our families and our student athletes today. My and we hope to see we hope to see everyone time. back yeah. for our May 16th Beyond the Game series that will take place with the NCAA. So Rick, thank you again, and I hope everyone Thanks, has Colleen. a great Wednesday evening. Thank you, Colleen.